Before I assemble the rest of the van and put the bed rails in and the bed rail, I thought I'd go through the electrical panel step by step. First, let me say that everything is protected behind this sheet of plexiglass. That sheet of plexiglass is held on by some threaded rod, which is quarter 20 rod. And what's really nice are these hurricane nuts right here because I simply screw them on with the hurricane nuts and the hurricane nuts are both on the top and on the back and it makes it a really easy way to hold this plexiglass in place yet be able to take it off real quickly so that's the sheet of plexi and in the plexiglass you can see there's a cutout here so I can easily reach the master shutoff switch Now explaining this step by step, I'm going to go from the battery. Over here we have two 202 amp hour lithium batteries from Big Battery. Those go into a bus right here and a bus right here. They are connected with Anderson connectors. There are two Anderson connectors and there's enough cable here that makes it easy for me to pull these out and work on them. This cable here is exactly the same length, both the negative and positive. While we're here at the battery cables, I want to mention that there is a connection here that goes back all the way to the battery monitor, and we'll get to that down the line. Also on the negative side, there is a monitor that goes into the Victron inverter. The positive side of the battery cable comes into a 50 amp fuse. The 50 amp fuse goes into this master on off switch. This shuts off or turns on the power to this main bus. You'll see on the other side of this 50 amp fuse is a wire that goes down into the solar charge controller. The solar charge controller is a 130 Victron solar charge controller. The 100 means it'll handle up to 100 volts. The 30 means it'll put out a maximum of 30 amps. So that goes into this 50 amp fuse, which is always charging the batteries. So there's no shut off for that. The only way to shut that off is to shut off this breaker switch and this is the only breaker in the entire van build. This circuit breaker connects to the two 10 gauge wires that goes up to the solar panels and up on the roof which you'll see later there are two 200 watt solar panels so a total of 400 watts. Also I will mention that those two solar panels are connected in series to give us the highest voltage possible and we allow the solar charge controller to convert that to the amperage we want. I found that has been the best way to do it instead of connecting them in parallel. Because a smaller wire, a thinner gauge wire, will handle high voltage but not high current. So let's go back down to these fuses. This first fuse right here is a 100 amp fuse and that goes directly to our 12 volt fuse panel. This fuse panel will handle up to 100 amps. So that's the reason for the 100 amp fuse. The next fuse is a 50 amp fuse and this connects to the DC to DC charger. All right, we have a DC to DC 40 amp charger which is over here and this fuse is the output so that DC to DC charger goes into this fuse and when the vehicle's running we can charge our batteries off the alternator. I have another video completely on installing the DC to DC battery charger. Next one down is another 50 amp fuse. This 50 amp fuse has an 8 gauge wire connected to it 
which goes all the way to above our sliding door. And above that sliding door in that little recess, we have another 12 volt fuse box. That's the reason you see many of these are blank. We didn't need to use them because I took one main wire and brought it over to another fuse box. I run the fuses off of that for anything that's close and on the passenger side. It actually saves us a lot of wiring and also a lot of money because that wire is pretty expensive. This 50 amp fuse which goes to that fuse box could be higher but I don't expect us to pull more than 50 amps even with all the things that are connected to that fuse box. Next one down is a 250 amp fuse. This is the 250 amp fuse and the connection, the positive connection to the Victron 3000 watt inverter. Then the next fuse down here, you'll notice it is not connected to this bus. This is the DC to DC charger input. The DC to DC charger is also fused right at the battery connection. So in reality, this fuse is a little bit extra. It's probably not needed, but it gives me peace of mind knowing that it's here. Remember, what these fuses are for is to protect the components and to protect the wire. You don't want to fuse amperage here higher than what the wire can handle. Now, that's all the positive connections. Down here, you know, all the negative connections. So all the mates to these are connected to this negative. This negative is grounded directly to the frame of the van. And I'll put in some pictures of that. It is also grounded directly to the battery. And if you want to see that connection, take a look at the video for the DC to DC charger. Right here, you see the black one aught cable, the negative side that goes to the battery. You'll see it's connected here to this battery monitor. This connects to the Victron battery monitor, which is located right above our sliding door. Also, the control panel for the Victron inverter is located above the door panel. Then below here, you'll see that there are two AC load centers. This one here is only for the shore power. And we have this hooked up through this cable, which goes underneath the van, and the plug-in is just underneath the van, and it's a 30 amp service. And it's fused with this breaker right here. In this load center, we have four circuit breakers. A 20 amp circuit breaker goes to the hot water tank. The other 20 amp circuit breaker goes to the refrigerator. This 15 amp breaker goes to what I call the charging cabinet. We have one cabinet dedicated to charging all our electronic devices. And then this 15 amp goes to the outlets under the sink and that are on the passenger side of the van. All of these are ground fault protected. You'll notice there's quite a bit of wire here and that's on purpose. If I want to work on these, I want to be able to pull them out and get a comfortable position to work on them. Right in this area right here is where our drawer slide will go for the two mountain bikes. So this is a perfect area for our electronics because it'll be easily accessible. All I would need to do to get full access to this is to take the two mountain bikes out and then remove that plexiglass panel. Then if I wanted to work on anything, there's enough wire here that I can simply pull this out. There's enough wire tucked in there that I can access this without any problems. The same for this one. I also put quite a bit of wire on the battery to battery charger. It makes it really easy to get to. And I tried to keep the lengths of the negative and positive exactly the same. So I want to make things easy to access, very simple to use. Also, if you take a look over on the other side, you've got the reverse osmosis system, and that is also easy to access. It's not hidden under a cabinet like a lot of van builders do.